Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. Well, I don't know if maybe you, some of you felt this, depending on where you were in the United States, but something very big and very fast was just recorded, or at least felt, by residents from one end of the country all the way to the other. This loud boom, this shaking, that almost felt like an earthquake, but that wasn't. And it didn't register on any of the seismological equipment, courtesy of the United States Geological Survey. And whatever this thing was that was flying over, it was fast. And the boom was first heard and felt over Bridgewater, New York. So this is all the way at the top, northeastern part of the United States. Where not only a boom, but a flash of light was heard and seen by residents as well as caught on surveillance footage from a private security camera on the side of a man's house. This was captured by Philip Vicari from his home on Popular Street in the Bradley Garden section of Bridgewater, New York. So I'll go ahead and play this now. Okay, so, some important things to note here. We see the light appear in the sky completely brightens up this entire area almost three seconds before we actually hear what appeared to be and what is said by many residents to have been a sonic boom or something similar like that. As if something very fast passed over this area and that would explain the sonic boom but it wouldn't explain the light which is why people are having trouble figuring out exactly what this was. Another strange phenomenon shook the border between San Diego and Tijuana, Mexico, that many residents originally believed was an earthquake. They heard a rumble before the shock at around 11 in the morning. Doors and windows rattled. However, neither of the United States Geological Survey or any other seismological entity detected any earthquake in the area. And we actually have a clip here from the local Channel 7 NBC News out of San Diego. But what was it? Well, we've been looking into this mystery to get some answers. Uh, meantime, NBC7's Rory Devine is in Coronado, uh, where people seem to have a few theories about what this, uh, this was, Rory. What was it, Catherine and Monica? Not surprised. surprisingly, people here in Coronado, at least one resident said, it probably has something to do with the Navy, but we don't have any confirmation of that from the Navy. And besides, people from throughout this county experience whatever this was. But let's get back to the folks here in Coronado. As you mentioned, they all have some different theories and even different feelings about what it sounded like. Well, it was a large, loud boom make a sound like a pop sort of that's all it was, it was loud at first i thought it was an earthquake because the window shook the door shook the whole house didn't rattle it was just a, a a boom thought nothing of it because of all the military that's on on the base i didn't really do anything about it i thought did we have an earthquake or what you know you know my housekeeper's there and she came over and she said was that an earthquake there was an earthquake no 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 it wasn't it was a boom it was something in the air now, we have a few seismologists who have been speaking about this. The first is a man by the name of Luis Mendoza Garcilazo, who is a seismologist at the Center for Scientific Research and Higher Education of Ensenada, who ruled out that it was an earthquake or a telluric movement, which if you don't know is an electric current which moves underground or through the sea. A geologist by the name of Pat Abbott indicated that if something had happened below the surface, it would be registered by multiple instruments that exist, but because that was not the case, he is convinced what shook the residents of the border originated from above. Now, Mendoza pointed out that according to the records, it was a quote, shock wave, like the one that occurs when an object travels faster than the speed of sound. Now, these shock waves can be caused by various situations, such as an explosion, the passage of a supersonic airplane, the entrance into the atmosphere of a meteorite, or something unidentified. 
and according to most of the testimony from residents both in New York and on the border between Mexico, uh, Tijuana, and uh, San Diego, this was something flying in the air. And so far, no one is claiming what it was. The Navy is, of course, being hush-hush. So, of course, I want to see if any of you guys saw this or got a recording of it. Definitely send me an email down below. Uh, if you remember, just a, a couple weeks ago, I posted a video where a viewer who was using a tool called the Next Generation Weather Lab captured one of these objects blasting up through the atmosphere at an amazing rate of speed. It looked to be coming from California or the Nevada desert heading towards Texas and was moving so fast that you can actually see this sort of shock wave that it creates in front of it as the water vapor in the air is displaced. And you're seeing that looping over here. So the big question here is what do we have flying over our country that is so large as it was in this instance that is creating light as it passes by shock waves that feel like earthquakes and are they ours or are they something from off planet? That is the big question. So stay tuned for updates on that. And in other news, if you remember last week, uh, Mr. Tom DeLong, the former frontman of the band Blink-182, who recently started a company to research into UFOs and experimental aircraft, recently went on to the Joe Rogan podcast where for about two hours, uh, Joe pretty much grilled him about this company, what he was going to be releasing, and if you watch that podcast, uh, you'll have noticed that Tom was very hesitant to give up any of his sources or really provide any actual groundbreaking information. And remember, he's asking for investors. He's already raised some $2 million on the promise that he would be releasing bombshell info that would finally reveal the truth to the alien phenomenon. And well, after that Joe Rogan podcast, there was a backlash from fans and viewers from all over the world who took to social media and Twitter and YouTube, uh, almost angry that throughout this two hour interview with Joe Rogan, uh, every time he was asked a point blank question, almost nine times out of 10, Tom would respond with, I can't reveal that information or I can't reveal that source, or I know things that they don't know, but I can't reveal them. And it got to the point where Mr. DeLong uh, went on the defensive on Twitter, posting a number of tweets that he later deleted, including a video, which we're going to show you here in a second. Uh, one of the tweets that you can find that's still up on his Twitter uh, would appear to take a jab at Joe Rogan, saying, quote, Focus on the team who owns To The Stars Academy. Joe Rogan unfortunately didn't see this, but you all should. And of course, what Tom is alluding to here is the fact that some of the people he is working with are some very high up former government people. Uh, he always alludes back to, well, look, I can't reveal that information, but just look who I have working with me. So he's basically name dropping in the hopes that that will be enough to quell the suspicions of the thousands of people who have come forward and said, look, you're not telling us anything. And so here's a video recently posted by Tom to his Twitter. Hey, uh, thought I would do a little bit of Twitter posting today. Um, I don't usually do this, but on Instagram and it goes out, uh, I know it's a lot for people to grasp what I'm doing and I think um, the easy thing is to like go and say oh my god he's lost the plot or he's crazy um, and he keeps saying he can't talk about things again for the 50th fucking time go read the biographies of the people that have partnered and own my company with me okay at to the stars academy.com read those bios then go listen to joe rogan and you better brace yourself because there's a lot more coming and i know it's hard to digest doesn't matter it's coming okay so uh there you guys have it not revealing much information but is asking once again that you simply look at the people that are working with him and that apparently that should be enough for you to know that this is legit. 
And um, again, only time will tell what will be released, and uh, hopefully he will be releasing something very soon. So lastly today, I want to show you guys some more new awesome fan mail that has been recently shipped to me by viewers. Many of you know my uh, P.O. box is down in the video description. Uh, the first thing that I got was a set of really awesome t-shirts. Uh, you're seeing one here that I tried on, fits perfectly, so big thanks to the viewer who sent this over. Uh, designed it himself, and if you can't read it, it may take you a second, but it says, We are here. And it has the little alien figure walking above that, and I thought that was pretty cool. So at first it looks kind of like a barcode, but when you step back and kind of squint your eyes, it becomes clear, and I thought that was awesome. And speaking of really awesome items that were created from scratch by a viewer, here is a really cool a Bic lighter holder that was manufactured with a 3D printer. And according to the viewer, it took probably all around from start to finish of creating it, then printing it, maybe six or seven hours. And um, for those of you who don't know, if you're not a smoker, well, you can buy these holders to put your lighters in. And yes, unfortunately, I must admit, I am a smoker. I'm trying to quit. It's my only vice. And obviously, this fan uh, remembers, I think, maybe the one time that I mentioned that. But it's really cool, and I, I appreciate the gesture. And I am using it, but I am trying to quit. So even when I do, I will cherish it and put it up on the mantelpiece as a reminder of just how awesome my fans are. So, big thanks to the man who sent this out. Now, lastly, I want to feature a really awesome book that a viewer sent. That is from, I believe, 1977. And it's crazy that it's in such a pristine condition. Very little wear. And it's called The Scholastic Fun Fact Book of UFOs. Strange Encounters with the Unknown. And this thing is really awesome, obviously a collector's piece, and it is full of information about some of the biggest UFO incidents, it's got colorful illustrations, photographs, and even breaks down some of the different types of aliens that had been reported up through the years, at least up until that time that the book was published. So really, really awesome, I really love this, big thanks to the viewer who sent this over. And lastly, I want to give a special thanks to the viewer who sent me this very nice homemade card that along with a heartwarming message included uh, this just epic drawing of what appears to be a human being, which I guess represents all of humankind. We have the earth in the background, and being an amateur artist myself, I used to love to draw and paint as a kid. I'm really appreciative of stuff like this and the time that it takes to make. So, thank you all. Uh, I have a bunch more stuff that I've received that I will be featuring in future videos, so look out for that. And if there's anything cool you want to send out, again, my address is down below. So thank you all again. Big high five from me to you. Subscribe, share this video, and I will see you back in just a bit.